And uh, we, uh, I guess I better start this morning by recapitulating a little bit where we are. But the main theme for today in, in the four lectures will be uh, the, uh, the, the guts of tech, the inner parts that really uh, uh, do most of the processing inside. And tomorrow's theme is going to be the things that uh, are going to be of primary concern to people in this audience, uh, how they, what uh, they really want to know about the, uh, uh, the, the things that uh, are going to be slightly different from one place to another. So to uh, uh, remind you of this, of uh, the structure of tech itself, somebody asked yesterday, could they have a copy of this diagram? And so I've made up Xerox copies, and we'll pass these out now. Start, start them going in two directions. Um, so we can get a feeling for where we are. Now, this is, remember that I said this part was the code. Um, and uh, each box represents about 10 modules in your listing. So when we were talking yesterday about the uh, dynamic memory in the last hour, this represents the amount of code there was for the dynamic memory, but the dynamic memory itself was taking a lot more space that we that uh, might uh, might overlap this whole diagram by at least half of it, but maybe maybe all of it for the dynamic memory itself. Then the e the EQTB the equivalence table was um, uh, is what I call locals here. This is the part of the. Uh, this is the part of the program that re that refers to saving and restoring the equivalence and defining all the macros that we had for equivalent. Um, in uh, the first lecture that we're having this morning, I want to study this part, uh, syntax, which is uh, the part that of, of tech that reads the input and figures out what to do next. Then next hour, we'll be talking about semantics, which is uh, doing it. Okay. Any questions on what we're about to do? So I'll, then we'll go back and and uh, take a look at that listing. So certainly I can't cover all of the all of the uh, ideas of syntax in one hour. But what I want to do is give you the feeling for for how it's organized, so that if you have any particular uh, uh, question on it, you know exactly where, where to look and. Uh, the uh, sections on syntax start out with part 21, module 277, introduction to the syntactic routines. And then um, that carries on through sec part 27, building token lists. So the basic scanning subroutines, part 26, is the, is the bulk of the thing. It's a, that's about uh, 55 modules worth in that. Uh, in that section, and I'll probably talk a lot about basic scanning subroutines. Um, since I can't cover everything, the approach I usually take is is uh, uh, trying to, to do a sample, uh, a random sample, of study um, study the whole thing lightly and one thing in depth, and, and there, thereby get some some idea. Uh, I'm not sure which one to study in depth, and maybe I can take some suggestions from the audience as we get into it. But uh, first, I should we should start out just with the basic idea of syntax. Um, what we have to do, the goal of syntax is to deliver. Um, uh, is, is to scan the input and, and deliver the, the necessary information to the uh, uh, semantic routines. And um, at, the, uh, uh, at the level the semantic routine wants it, it usually wants to get a command uh, and a modifier to the command, which is, which is called chur, uh, although chur sometimes is a pointer, not really a character. Uh, so we have a command code and a character Part. And then there's also um, CS pointer goes with it in case the thing that you fetched from the input was a control sequence, then the command will will maybe be, um, uh, I'm sorry, the CS pointer will point to whatever control sequence actually gave this, had this command in sure. Um, so that in, in an error message, for example, um, uh, you, you, uh, you'd like to use the, the, the control sequence that actually ca caused this thing. Somebody in, in tech can say let um, backslash a equals uh, 
uh, deaf or something like this. Well, now if I have a, or what, if, if you've decided to redefine text primitive called deaf, and the user is using some other name for it, then you have an error message. Uh, um, you would like to use the, the the new name in the error message rather than the uh, the old one. So CS pointer is another thing you get from the from the input routine. So the the thing that delivers the next token is called get next subroutine get next, um, and its job is to get the next token of input. Now, um, might sound like an easy job. Uh, after all, you just advance your pointer one in the buffer, and there it is, right? Um, however, get next uh, uh, turns out to have a lot of different things that it might be having to get. For example, it, ha it might have to um, expand a macro. It might have to uh, uh, be reading an argument on macro. It might have to recognize a control sequence, uh, whether it's defined or not, and look it up in the hash table. Uh, it might ha it might find that uh, in order to get the next thing, actually uh, we have to prompt for it because there, because it hasn't been given to us yet. Um, we might run to the end of a file, uh, and and uh, or uh, uh, you know so so if we get to the end of the file, that means that we have to close out that file, do some uh, processing. Um, all kinds of, of things can actually happen when you say get next. Um, historically, in fact, uh, get next was the routine that started this whole web project going. We took the uh, uh, we took the uh, get next procedure out of Tech 78, and we um, uh, we said, well, how would how would we really want to present this this code? And we and we played around with Luis and I uh, tried se several drafts until we and, until we had played around with, uh, with until we got to what we thought would be a good way to present the get next routine, and uh, uh, and that led a bit that to the doc system of t of two years ago and eventually to to web. So it was uh, it was uh, had enough uh, structure and subparts to it that it that it that it uh, was really our first test case for the whole idea of this style of documentation. Um, the uh, get next routine is is uh, it begins in module 317, and um, uh, the whole the structure of it is is given there. So the get next it by itself looks looks very simple. Let's see if we can if we can uh, get if we can focus on this. Uh, can you re can you read that with your TV cam with your camera? Let's try to get. Let's see if we can set up the way we had yesterday. Yet, uh, 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 okay. You need enough light in order, on on my podium in order to read the uh, in order to to see where my finger is. But then the people on the screen could might could see where I'm pointing if they if they project onto the screen what's going on in the monitor. It worked yesterday, but it might take a little bit of fi figuring to to, to 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 do it here. Now I've got something on the screen here, and I'm pointing to get next. Uh, can, oh, you can see a finger? Yeah. Well, is that about all? Okay. Somebody said that they could shut the door back there, and that would make the light that would make it easier to to read the screen. No. Yeah. Okay. So um, the whole idea of get next is. Uh, is is rather simple. Then uh, we have a couple of labels in here. Restart. Uh, if we have, if for some reason what we tried to, to get uh, uh, resulted in nothing, and so we have to have to start again, uh, then there's uh, some other some other switches that we go to. But the the code is for get next is very short, except that we this involves a couple of submodules. So um, uh, we set CS pointer to zero. CS pointer is going to be zero unless there was a control sequence gotten. That's why uh, the uh, EQTB starts at location one instead of zero, because the first control sequence actually is is uh, is one. Uh, now, um, then state is one of the variables that we have set up for us all the time at, at our fingertips uh, to tell us w what kind of uh, what kind of input we're doing. If the state is token list, that means that we're getting we're getting something not from the user source file, but from um, from inside of tech, from some token list uh, that that uh, uh, we have to read through, 
and, and get the next symbol off that token list. The token list can, can be about, of about ten different kinds. Uh, uh, the, uh, for example, uh, it could be an output routine, it could be a macro, it could be uh, every par, this feature that comes up at the beginning of a paragraph, it could be the parameter to a macro, uh, could be something that we inserted just to back up. We, we, read, we read some token, we decided we weren't ready for it now, so we put it back and we ran into a small token list and so that we can read it again. It might be something uh, like we converted a number to Roman numerals and uh, we want to read that. So anyway, token, so token list is one way we can get input, uh, but if it's not token list, if the state is not token list, then we get input from an external file and uh, we would go to restart if there wasn't anything found. Otherwise, we of course want an input from a token list and uh, we have other cases where we might have to go to restart because there was nothing there yet. So two main branches of get next for those two cases. Then if uh, we've got to the end of an alignment entry, then we have to do something special for alignment. Here's one, one of the places where this post-hypnotic suggestion comes in with alignment, saying that, uh, for example, if you, if you just now got to a, a tab mark in alignment, this is the time to em emit uh, the, uh, the thing that's supposed to finish off that column. And so you do a little bit of special calculation for alignment if you just happen to notice that this if it gets triggered right here in the middle of get next. Now the, um, get next is part of the inner loop of the code. Uh, certainly uh, when we when the first part of it here, this restart, CS pointer to zero and so on. And I talked a little bit about inner loop yesterday. Now if you want to find out exactly where I think most of the time is spent in tech, you look in the index and under inner loop and it refers you to about 20 modules which I believe are the ones that, uh, that account for almost all of the, all of the processing time um, uh, in the sense that uh, the other ones are probably executed in order of magnitude less. And um, not all of these modules are, uh, are executed very often, but uh, uh, so we, we try to write the program so that the frequent parts um, are done rather fast. And, and I think my estimate is something like 100 machine instructions uh, per per character of text is um, is approximately right. I have to double check it again now that I've got the whole tech put together. But that was, if you consider uh, um, the, uh, what would happen if you took a tech file, added one more character to one of the paragraphs, um, how many more machine instruct instructions would the CPU have to do? And it was on the order of 100, I believe. Um, and that, and we tried to keep that uh, uh, going fast. So we want uh, uh, we want get next in particular to to be reasonably reasonably fast. And uh, if we're inputting from an external file, um, we go to module 319. Module 319 uh, is uh, a switch that we're reading from an external file now. And so our state actually. The state consists of, uh, of a number of different things. Five or six different quantities that actually correspond to the, to the current input state. And one of them is called uh, state, uh, which we looked at to see if it was tokenless or not. Another one is called loc, uh, which is the location where we are in the buffer. Another one is called limit, which is the end of that line in the buffer. Uh, in, in the buffer, we might have um, lots of different lines. We might have part of a line from a terminal. We have we, then, then we, we, we were reading some file, and uh, in the middle of that line it said input from another file, and uh, so, so we might have uh, several different things in the buffer. Uh, but the, and limit tells where, that, where the current line ends, and if it's a local less than or equal limit, then the current line is not yet finished, and so we have to do the thing that we're almost always doing. Now, when the loc is greater than limit, though, then we have an unusual case, not in the inner loop, uh, and that is move to the next line of file or go to restart if there is no next line of the file. And uh, so we do that, and, and that's a time when we can also check and interrupt. Um, there is a, uh, a provision, if you can do it in your system, for interrupts, uh, uh, to, for interrupting tech. And uh, at safe times to make an interrupt, I'll say check interrupt. There aren't that many places where I do it. Um, but this is this is uh, a fairly good place at the end of a line uh, in in the buffer. So then, uh, if you um, at the end of a token list is another is another place, and uh, this happens fast enough that uh, if somebody's sitting there and wants to stop the tech run or do something special, you can probably catch it 
uh, in, in one of those places. Now, uh, uh, and uh, the, the main case, though, the one that, that's, that uh, we want to be at high speed is this first line here, uh, where loc is less than or equal limit, because that's the, the, the case when, that we're, we're most interested in getting to go fast. Okay, so then we set current char, current char to buffer position, buffer loc. So buffer uh, is a is an array of ASCII code characters. This is text internal code, and uh, all the external file has been converted to that and sits in the buffer in, ex in, in, in uh, internal code form. Increase the location, and then we go to uh, uh, set up the current command, which is the chacode of the Kirchar. Now, chacode of Kirchar is really, this is a macro that's an abbreviation for get out of the EQTB the current value of the uh, of the of the code for that character, we have um, made sure elsewhere that this that, that this is going to be in range. Nobody's allowed to store into that part of EQTB a number that's uh, uh, that's uh, uh, that couldn't possibly be a code of a character. I think the only the legal ones are zero to fifteen. So this uh, this this is known to be current command is now known to be a number between zero and fifteen, and then we have. The big uh, thing that, that changes state and go to switch if the current character should be ignored. So now in the tech manual, I have a chapter that sort, that sort of says what these states are and how we're, how we're actually reading. So we have a state that says we're skipping blanks. If we're in skipping blanks state, then uh, if a blank comes next, we skip it and uh, so on. There's, there's three states, actually, midline, new line, and skipping blanks. And we want this to be fast, so that's module 320. Let's take a look at what that is. So, so uh, module 320 is uh, a big case st statement, and, and it's done by case of state plus cur command of. So the state is now uh, encoded as a number that is uh, 1, 17, or 33, I believe it is, so that the current command be being between 0 and 15 added to the state will take us to a unique location. Um, no sense multiplying here. We're in the inner loop. We might as well define the state code so that it already includes the multiplication by 16. Um, and and uh, so then we can have a state uh, of, of various states like, well, here's an example. Midline plus spacer, midline plus carriage return, skip blanks plus carriage return, any state plus end line. Any state plus is a... Uh, is a macro that's defined to to it's defined over here. Uh, where was it here? Any state plus. Can anybody? Yeah. Any state plus uh, midline. So that that adds midline plus the thing, skip length plus the thing, new line plus the thing. So anyway, this is the way we recognize uh, it's a it's a uh, 16. It's a 48-way switch um, that will at high speed decide what to do next. Um, Okay, uh, if, for example, we get any state plus escape, we have to scan a control sequence and then um, set state to skip blanks because we're going to skip a blank after a control sequence. That's the way this, this part of the code looks. And uh, uh, the, uh, the number of machine instructions actually needed for this is supposed to be rather small. If you, and uh, um, if your compiler really does terrible things with case statements, then uh, you might want to take take the 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 few places in the inner loop where there's a case statement, and uh, and and do something special to the uh, 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 to that part of the program. Uh, that as a refinement, but it will make tech run faster. If you can make this part run um, five percent faster, your tech will probably run four percent faster. <laughs> so uh, something like that, I think is uh, is worth pointing out. Now, the, uh, on a, if you have a token list, um, that starts at module 333. And uh, so the token list, uh, again, we have state, state information besides the, the state. The, the, uh, the thing the variable called state itself will equal token list, but then loc, in this case, will be a pointer to what token is next in the, um, in the, mem, in, in the memory array. And if that's null, then we might, uh, you know, we're at the end of the token list. But if it's not null, then we, we fetch out of the token uh, the uh, command and char and CS pointer, uh, just as if we had scanned it out of the input. And uh, otherwise, if it's null, then again, we have one of these things where we, uh, where we can end the token list. 
I thought that I I guess end token list itself is where the uh, is where it would check for an interrupt. Okay, yeah, and I am surprised I don't see a pause for interrupt in there, but I, I suppose it's in end token list itself. I, I, I don't want to take time to look it up now. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about this is that you'll notice then the control sequence never it doesn't live in mem by its alphabetic name. The only uh, control sequence is certain is represented um, as um, as the as an address in EQTB in that token, and so uh, the only time you're ever you're ever uh, looking at, at a, at a, at a uh, control sequence to figure out what its hash address is is when that is when that appeared in a in a file. Only when the, the only time you are scanning um, uh, it, it, you you uh, 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 have to compute a hash code to figure out where the EQTB address is is in the first case of get next where you saw an escape delimiter in the file. So. Um, if you have a long or short macro name, it doesn't make any difference when you're actually using the macro as to how long the name was. It only took a little longer if for a long name at the first when you input the thing into, uh, into a token list in the first place. But once, uh, uh, once you've got a, uh, uh, a control sequence into a token list, it's just like any other control sequence, no matter how long its, its actual out external name was. Okay. So... Um, all of these modules handle then the there's weird cases of, of get next where we have to do things like a person has said pause set to non-zero value and uh, in, in that case uh, that means that after you've read a new line out of your file uh, you're supposed to display it on the terminal give the user a chance to see what's going on and maybe make a change to it before tech actually gets it um, you have to and uh, um, in my change file, the only thing I had to change in get next was uh, uh, to make it m more friendly on our particular editor at sale, which is page oriented editor. So we have not only page numbers, uh, line numbers, but we also have page numbers. So I, so, um, uh, I had to uh, make sure that, um, uh, that the page number would get adjusted when I passed a page mark in the file. Um, also, I spent uh, most of an afternoon trying to get it to work with our, our line editor, which is a special feature on our system that uh, allows a, a user to um, change a line as, as it comes in um, and edit it with, a, with some rather powerful editing commands uh, that would search for characters and insert characters in the line and so on. Um, uh, and I, and I uh, made, made the, uh, uh, this part of the, pro, of the get next routine uh, talk to that system routine, so it's certainly not standard in Pascal. So I had to do those two things in the change file for, for get next. Now, the, now um, um, almost all uses of get next are covered in the next part of the program there, uh, starting at 338. And um, the most common way to call get next is, um, is get NC token. Um, if you look at the rest of tech, you'll find and you find out where is get next actually used. You think, well, this would be one of the most common subroutines to call uh, because you need to get the next token a lot in a lot of different places and, and continue on advancing to do something. But in, if you look in the index under get next uh, for the uses of it, you find that it's only only used in about four places. Um, but those, but uh, it's used in get nc token, and and most of the other times in tech, when we when we want the next thing, we actually get, we actually call this subroutine instead of the other one. The the only exception to that is, well, I mean, sorry, the only place where where the the main body of tech itself calls get next is in the inner loop, where we want to avoid an extra level of procedure overhead of get nc token. And so in the, in the very inner loop where you're scanning a word out of a paragraph and looking for ligatures and things like this, where you expect that the next, letter is pr it, the next thing is just going to be a letter, then you call get next in order to avoid get NC token. And then if you look at it and, see, and it looks like it's something that's more complicated, then uh, we'll, we'll call a subroutine uh, and leave the inner loop. Um, so uh, this inner loop has, uh, has a, the idea of making it efficient has, has uh, uh, 
affected the, uh, the coding to a, small, to a certain extent. Uh, it makes it a little harder to read, but only, uh, I think, only 1% only harder, so it was okay. Um, now, get NC token is like get next, but it does, it does more. It, it, NC stands for non-call. And call is a is a macro that's that uh, or you know uh, that has to be expanded. So get NC token means that if if that it's get next, but if it turned out the next thing was a macro, uh, expand it and 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 get me the next thing that isn't a macro. So this is the so when I call get NC token, this says. Let me see whatever is next, but be sure that it doesn't in include any control. It, it's not something that's been deft. Um, furthermore, um, get NC token sets besides com command and char. In fact, it's called cur command and cur char um, are, are, the, are the variables that get next sent. Um, it sets cur tok, uh, which is the which is a token, a, a half word representation of the command and char and CS pointer. So that uh, you, can, uh, you can have one variable that, that uh, uh, stands for all of the others in a packed form. Uh, this, is, this is convenient if you want to store it away in another token list or something like that. You, uh, you can use it, or if you have to back up, it's all ready to be backed up. So, so uh, get NC token gives you the values of cur command, cur char, CS pointer, and cur tok, which, and this is enough by itself to deduce the other three. Um, get NC token is, uh, is the, will also expand not only macros, but it will, it will um, um, expand um, marks, like top mark or something like that, if you, if you want to, because they're somewhat analogous to macros. Um, if you if the next uh, token is an undefined control sequence, get NC token issues you the error, error message saying undefined control sequence because this is where it would it, it would not let let it get through. When you call get NC token, you don't have to check afterwards that the thing was an undefined control sequence. Get NC token will will already uh, remove all undefined control sequences from you and get the next thing that's really legitimate. Um, there's another routine called NC token I might just mention because it's, um, it's used only in the one place in the inner loop where in the inner loop we had a place where we expected that that it was unlikely we'd have a macro c coming next. And so we called get next. It was going to save us a, 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 the level of procedure call that would have said call this first and then that would call get next. This would be a little faster. Uh, but if we found out that that uh, our assumption was wrong, that really get, that really there was a macro there, then we call NC token which is exactly the same as get NC token, except that it, 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 except uh, somehow get NC token is equivalent to get next followed by NC token. Um, the other main way to call get next is called get token, and this one uh, does not expand macros. It just gives it to you with uh, uh, so so the token that you get you get you get your cur command you get your cur char and your cs pointer uh, and you get cur token also but if but it, it's possible that cur command would be um, uh, call or long call for calling a long macro or you know or uh, or something like a, a mark top mark or an undefined control sequence. It's certainly possible that get token will return you the name of, a, of an undefined control sequence. And this is the thing that you use at times when uh, you're building uh, a definition. For example, after the word def, and then if you say def whatever follows it, you'd say get token. You certainly wouldn't want to say get nc token. That would replace the thing by its previous definition or give you an error if it wasn't already defined. It would be a big, big tragic mistake. So there are places where we don't, where we definitely want to suppress um, macro expansion, and that's what get token does. Okay. So the uh, uh, the those routines get token, get nc token, are they're just uh, they're, they're rather simple routines. Uh, of module 339 is uh, get token, 
um, just to reinforce it, let's let let's uh, show you what get token is. This is module 339, and it says set cur command cur chur and cur tok. I goofed. I said cur token on the board here. I meant cur tok. Um, and uh, okay, there's a uh, no new control sequence to set to false. Then get next and set no new control sequence true. The um, uh, in the middle of the get next routine, the, there's a part of it that would have to look that might have to go and look at the hash table and um, and uh, uh, this and, and add a new undefined control sequence to the hash table. Now, we don't want to put uh, misspelled things in the hash table if they're going to turn out to be an error. So so uh, uh, generally we have a variable no new control sequence that says new control sequences aren't allowed. This is the only place where we set it false and we set it true afterwards. Now this is uh, this violates uh, prevailing wisdom about programming, um, which says that you shouldn't that, that global variables are considered harmful and that you should pass such things as parameters. Uh, but the, my comments about the inner loop should indicate why I thought why I feel that this is actually uh, as long as we're using it in a disciplined way, uh, we know what we're doing. This is a valid way to save a lot of time by not saying get next of um, some parameter that says whether or not a new control sequence is allowed or not. And get next would have to propagate that down to, to the hash uh, routine and, and a bunch of other things. Uh, setting up the uh, setting up a parameter every time we call that subroutine would make tech run a lot slower. Um, all right. Uh, so get next. This will then allow a new control sequence to appear. Um, I guess I made a little lie when I said that's the only place this is said false. There's one other place, and that's in any tech when you're first loading the uh, when you're first loading the hash table. Okay. Then, if CS pointer is zero, this means there was no there was not a control sequence found. Uh, then we do this part. Otherwise, we set current token equal to the CS token flag plus CS pointer. So current token is is properly set up, and that's all there's to it. If we did, but if it was zero, then uh, there's a, a, a fatal error in here. If the current command is NV, NV occurs in alignment, and this would actually uh, be something I'm not even sure it can ever happen. Uh, but probably it will. It, it will. There, but I, but if it would happen, I wouldn't have any idea how to recover from it. Um, and this would mean that somebody is is uh, calling macro without expansion at a time when it's also possible to uh, uh, to be finishing a column in an alignment. And uh, well, if you think about it a while, I, uh, it, uh, I think there's nothing else to do except give a fatal error. And uh, we'll see what happens if there is ever. If, if maybe if, if that uh, turns out there's a way to recover in a. In a, in a reasonably common case, and of course we would change this part of the code. Uh, so, I, but I make the check here because if I didn't, and I allowed that, I, I uh, allowed that uh, NV to get through, then all kinds of things could could get screw up in the rest of tech. So I wanted to trap it here, um, even though this might be the inner loop. <laughs> uh, and Kurtok then is said in this case to to a packed version of the command and character. Uh, as we mentioned yesterday, that's the way we represent a uh, token. All right, those are the basic things that are the, all the rest of tech uh, relies on: get token, get NC token, in order to look at at its input. Any questions on that? Okay. Now the uh, um, uh, the interesting part of syntax is the uh, is the is the section called basic scanning. Subroutines, and these are the things that do higher-level uh, parsing of text sources. And uh, well, basic scanning routines start out with some that are actually pretty, pretty dumb. Uh, uh, there's one called scan left brace. Every once in a while, tech gets to a point where it's got to see a left brace, or not, or, or else, uh, it, or else it's stuck. And so it calls scan left brace, and, and uh, this uh, subroutine, I think it's probably used about 15, 20 times. This is module 363. Um, and uh, so it just, uh, uh, you know, this is, this, well, this is the typical way that we, that we uh, would call something, and it says get the next non-blank non-call token. 
if the next thing is really a space, then 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 uh, we won't give an error message saying miss, missing left brace because we will keep on going till we get something besides a space. Uh, but then, uh, so so this is a little a little thing that that gets used very often. Notice uh, module 364. This code is used in sections 363. Da 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 da. da. Um, rather often we'll say get nc token until per command is unequal spacer. Okay. Uh, and then. If cur command is not a left brace, then uh, we're, then we got this long um, uh, message, and, I, and here it gives us a chance to show how those help messages and, and errors are uh, a typical error is 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 done. Um, fatal errors are very unusual, but but uh, this kind of error where that where we give a help message is is typical. So take a look at it. If we start out with a, with print something on a new line, and our error message, our official error message here, has uh, ex starts with an exclamation point. Uh, missing left brace inserted. Now, the help message is uh, is then is given next before I call the error subroutine, and um, and the number of lines of help is is uh, is used here so uh, so that I could stick to simple web macros, and uh, so I have a help four for a four line help message and a help three for a three line help message and so on. Uh, the help message comes in uh, a left brace was mandatory here, so I put one in. You might want to delete or insert some corrections so that I'll find a matching right brace soon. If you're confused by all this, try typing I right brace now. That's that's the best way to probably recover if they didn't. You know, but if they had a missing left brace uh, and I'm going to put one in, it, it can also be a problem if there isn't a, a right brace uh, somewhere else. Um, then I call back error. Back error is a uh, is something that uh, takes current token and puts it back so that it'll be read again. And so the next thing get token or get next we'll see is uh, is uh, the, the the one that it that it just already saw. And uh, it backs up and also uh, well, does does the right things for backing up. And then the current token is set to a left brace token and. And uh, we pretend that we've read it. That's uh, in agreement with what we said here that, that a missing one was inserted. Um, somebody asked me the other day why I, uh, uh, the style of these help messages using I and U in these messages. And, and, and uh, I, I believe uh, uh, there's several reasons why uh, it's, uh, it turns out to be a win to have the computer talking to you as if it, as if it understands. I mean, or it'll make a, a statement like saying, uh, um, I, I, I don't understand this, or I do understand something. When we all know that the computer doesn't really think well, um, uh, because the the main reason is that that you can communicate a lot more in a small space when you when you use the the English language the way it was designed to be used. And English language has developed over thousands of years, and and um, the thing it's most powerful at is discourses between. <laughs> Between people, and so when we, when if we, if we, uh, if we restrict ourselves to using third person all the time, uh, then we, then we're, we're losing a great deal of power of it. So, so this, so uh, in fact, uh, um, I, I sketched out all kinds of ways to write help messages, and finally this one turned out to be by far the, 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 the one that, that gave the most, uh, uh, had the most uh, uh, effective. I, I'm, I'm quite uh, convinced of this. Um, and now the help messages have to be at most 60 characters long uh, per line, uh, and, I, and I also like to make those lines uh, break in a somehow reason, you know fairly for a nice way. So it was a little bit of a challenge sometimes to take a 61 character word one and figure out what was the right word uh, to substitute. But when when, tr when writing these help messages, I also tried to use words that were different from the ones in the official error message that was given earlier. So that person has the error described in two different ways, has a chance of understanding one of those two. Um, so so uh, uh, you know, if, if people here from foreign countries uh, implementing tech there would like uh, to, to make uh, tech more friendly there, uh, you might uh, probably be better to, to have the help messages translated into uh, your own native language. Um, or people from the East Coast might want to translate it into East Coast uh, English and so on, and, um, uh, so on. And MIT is a, another special case, right? And, uh, I mean, anyone who's reading the help messages in Emacs knows that they have a language of their own, right? So, so um, now the uh, anyway, uh, we, we try to make the help message uh, uh, in an IU. Um, uh, uh, 
situation. And when, when you see the New Tech Manual with the illustrations, uh, you, you'll also get an idea that we can sort of personify tech, because there's a character that appears in these illustrations who um, is going to be on all our t-shirts next year. Um, now the, the, uh, uh, so this is um, uh, a, simple, a simple use of the, of the scanning. And um, uh, there's a, a slightly more interesting one on the next page, uh, in case you're getting bored. This one is used to scan a keyword when we're looking for something like plus or minus or, or for, after, various words uh, uh, um, that, that uh, might be present in a uh, it, in a text, and this one we'll we'll look ahead to see if you've got uh, if 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 you, if you match a keyword uh, either with uppercase or in, possibly in an uppercase version of the keyword. It's all done here. Whenever you're looking for such a keyword, this this function scan keyword returns uh, yes or no whether it found the keyword or not. If it found it, then we pass it in the input, and we, we're ready to read on. If it didn't find it, we back up over the partial finds that we might have made and uh, our, our position back at where we were before uh, 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 before we started. Okay. Um, now, um, uh, the most now, but after that, we get into the interesting things. Uh, the really, the, the really uh, 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 important basic scanning routines are the ones that that recognize higher level constructs in the in the input. Uh, for example. Uh, if, if it time, comes time for tech to look for an, in, uh, an integer number, then it, tech can say scan int, and it will look for an integer number in the, as the next thing in the input. Now, an integer number can be uh, uh, an integer number, like 12, 1 followed by 2. But it, can, it could be an octal. So it would be, it starts with, if the next thing we see is a apostrophe, then we start to say, well, we'll scan in, rate in optimal notation, and 1, 2 will mean 10. Um, uh, it might start with a backwards apostrophe, which means we're looking for a character constant. Um, but integer number might start with a minus sign, of course. Uh, then, we, then we have to have, to have all these options uh, again after we've decided to negate it. In fact, it, well, it can start with a plus sign, which is sort of a no-op. Uh, and we, we go past the plus sign. And we can have uh, a, a bunch of minus signs, in fact, a bunch of minus signs and plus signs there. Uh, certainly you, you, it's important when you have a language that uh, uses macros uh, to allow minus minus to appear, because uh, otherwise the macros that would have to be very worried about, uh, about not allowing that to, to come through. So minus minus should, 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 be, should be legal. Uh, but besides all of these things, other th um, integers can also be stored in text registers. So it might say backslash count uh, something or other, and we're supposed to recognize that uh, and fit, fetch the val current value of the counter. Um, the most complicated one is when, the, when you say the. In Tech 82, this is something that isn't in the present tech, but if you, if you want to give an integer, you can, you can start out with the word the. And then the will fetch many things inside of text uh, uh, internal tables. So the will be able to fetch out, for example, um, uh, any one of the parameters, the hyphenation penalty or something like that. Um, the can be used to find out parameters that have been stored with a particular font and uh, many other things. Now. Scan int then scan, scans an integer. There's also scan demen, which scans a dimension, and will return a value uh, of a dimension. Uh, now, it, uh, as I wrote this, it, it turned out to be better not to return the value as the value of a function, but to to put it in a in a global variable, curval. Um, and uh, again, here was a case that it took that uh, my. Uh, my original design was not to use this global variable, but I found out later that I was getting much better uh, re uh, program uh, by by using a global variable for this purpose. So, there, so curval is if you call scan int, the answer uh, occurs in uh, appears in curval. Um, now, so scan demand is for getting a dimension, and there's um, scan skip or scan glue. Gosh, I forgot what I called it. Um, scan demand starts at 400, and scan glue. Um, yes, yeah, scan glue at 4:13. Um, uh, so these are three three high-level things. The scan glue routine is going to look for something that is a dimension, and then possibly saying plus some other 
amount of stretchability and then or uh, minus uh, something or other. Um, well, now all of these th three things can say the. For example, when you when tech comes to the point where it wants to scan glue, um, the glue might start with the word the. It might be the baseline skip, for example. So if you want to if you want to do a V skip by the baseline skip, you can say V skip the baseline skip. When when tech uh, is, it starts its V skip instruction, it'll call scan glue to figure out how much it's supposed to skip by. So V skip um, uh, can be followed by the. Now, let's look at the syntax a little bit of of uh, uh, look at the syntax of of uh, glue. What does it consist of? Well, it consists of a dimension, um, and then optionally. Um, plus, sorry, plus a, um, a, a, a dimension, and optionally minus a, a dimension. And we know that in order to scan these words plus and minus, we're going to have that scan keyword subroutine, and we got scan demand to do this to do this thing. Um, well, but now if you think about it, uh, demand starts with a uh, uh, demand like you know 10 points starts with scan int. Um, one of the dimensions can also be um, uh, apostrophe 77 point. You can give a dimensions in octal, so it has to start with a, with scan and int, integer. Or you can say count five points, things like that. Um, so demand can start with an integer, and uh, for, and uh, glue can start with a demand. And uh, all of these can be the. So when I call the here, um, uh, OK, if it says the baseline skip, that would substitute for all of this. But if it says the var unit, that's a dimension, or the h size, what, or, or b size, say, uh, that's a dimension. That would leave us, that would leave us uh, only at the first part, and then we still have to look for plus again. And the, if it was, if it was a count or some other, or some uh, other integer register like the uh, the time or something like that, all kinds of integers that can occur. Uh, who would like to be skipped by the time of day, but why not? Um, uh, then it has to be followed by, then that's only part of a dimension. So after we finish, so, so we have a, the subroutines of tech called scan the, but it doesn't know uh, what what it's going to wind up with? It might wind up with a, with glue, the whole a whole piece of glue. It might wind up with a dimension. It might wind up with just an integer. So um, uh, besides curval, where, which contains the result of scan the, we also have curval level, which tells what kind of a thing it found. And so the curval level will be set to either int val or demand val or glue val telling you what kind of a thing you got. So, so after you've called, so you call a subroutine called scan the and looks ahead to see what, what's, what's following. And afterwards, if it found a baseline skip, full piece of glue, then curve val level will be, will say glue val. And curve val will be a pointer to the specification of the glue that, uh, that, that was found. So that you can figure out what you got. Um, that was the, uh, the main uh, uh, un unusual aspect of the design of these particular subroutines. Uh, now, you, these things are also recursive uh, because if you, if you see what's going on, if you say, um, if you're trying to scan an integer, integer starts with the word count, um, then um, which counter are you doing? You have to give a number between 250, 0 and 255, and that's an integer. So you have, so, so, uh, Scan, so so uh, scanning an integer can ask uh, can uh, reduce to uh, scanning an integer or scanning the. I mean, you can say count the something or other, and that would give you one of the counters. And so the scan the has to call scan int. Scan int has to call scan the, or and scan int and so on. So these procedures are mutually recursive, um, but uh, they, they they keep on getting further and further into the input, so they don't. Uh, they don't get into a loop, of course. Question, yeah. Yeah, it seems almost that what you're asking it to do there is identical to what you're asking it to do when it expands macros. 
I'm a little curious about why you didn't do it the same way. In the in the uh, get next routine itself. Yeah, that simply have glue parameters. In fact, be macros, and we have them expand to token lists. Well, the easy answer is I didn't think of it, but uh, uh, and uh, uh, but um, I, I haven't got a simple. Uh, otherwise, this is the way that occurred to me to do this. Yeah. Um, now the uh, okay. So so uh, I'd like to look at in the, in the remaining five minutes. I'd like to look at one of these in a little more detail, so you can get a little more feeling for it. Uh, but I take a suggestion from the audience. Uh, what do you think would be a good one to pursue? Just to get a feeling for what 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 what's totally involved here, or. Or you don't want to look at any of them? What? what? <laughs> Lynn, so tell me. What to, no, no idea what to do. Okay. Well, let's take a look at uh, at the details of scanning uh, a demand. Then, um, scan demand starts on uh, module 400, and uh, when we look at what actually has to be done, now the, the job of scan demand is going to be to put in Curval um, a, a, an integer in scaled points, uh, or, or in other words, a scaled quantity, um, and the units are two to the sixteenth, uh, uh, two to the minus sixteenth points. Um, and this is supposed to be something that all versions of Tech 82 will 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 arrive at exactly the same number. It's uh, quite important to to, uh, uh, to design the language so that it's machine independent in this way. Um, now there's, but it turns out there's three uh, parameters to this when you start looking at what scan dim dimension has to has to handle. And uh, the first parameter is called mu. Um, because of uh, of things in math mode, when in math mode when you when you say m m skip uh, or m kern uh, to give spacing in math mode. Uh, you're not supposed to say three uh, um, three points. You're supposed to say three mu, which is three math units. And this is a variable unit that will change whether or not you're in a subscript or something like that. But but math units are not allowed outside of this outside of these contexts. And so scan demand takes the first parameter mu, which is either true or false, saying whether whether the units um, are supposed to be mu or not. Um, most of the um, the next parameter to scan demand is called int, and um, um, this it, this says whether or not it'll allow the units to be uh, infinite. There are three versions of infinity: fill, fillil, and fillil. And uh, if anybody knows a poem by Ogden Nash about uh, a, a one L llama is a priest, a two L llama is a beast, and he bets something that they'll never see a three L llama or something like that. Well, we don't have four L fills in this in this language. Now, now, um, um, uh, but this this inf parameter is to scan to men is uh, is true or false depending on whether or not um, such things are are legal. Um, and they're only legal after plus or minus, so the, so uh, usually that parameter is false. And the third parameter is called shortcut, and the, and that says and that's because uh, when you're scanning a dimension, you might already have built up part of that dimension, uh, and you're ready to go right to the to to the part that adds up the uh, that that inserts the uh, uh, points or whatever, and because uh, uh, you might have called the and it gave you an integer. And then, then, and so you're halfway through in, into your scanning dimension already. So, so you want to uh, you want to pass by that first part of the routine. So, uh, those are three parameters to scan demand. Most of the time, when I want to get a dimension, though, in, in one of my semantic routines, I'll call scan demand of false, 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 because all of those other cases to, uh, haven't arisen. There's no shortcut, no mu, and no infinite glue. Allowed. <clears throat> okay. Now, scan demand is. I'm looking at module 401. And uh, um, I have uh, 
fairly large procedure here, but if you but but I think by by reading it uh, in this module form, we get it, we we boil it down to uh, in this case a little more than 12 lines. Uh, but we can see exactly what all what all it has to do. Um, F is the an integer is the numerator of a fraction whose denominator is two to the sixteenth. The big problem in Scandam N is going to be to preserve this machine independence to make sure I do all my fixed point arithmetic with numbers that would fit on 32-bit machine. Um, and also I have to check for arithmetic overflow that might occur then during these calculations. Um, the Kerr order, this is a global variable that's going to, re if, if uh, I do find infinite glue, I have to tell somebody whether it, which kind of fill it was with, with one, two, or three L. So the Kerr order is going to be normal um, unless I found some special glue. Negative is something I set false, and that'll flip back and forth if I find minus signs in front of the darn thing. Negative means should the answer be negated. Um, okay, then, if not shortcut, then I have to do all this stuff, uh, which gets the integer part or the, uh, gets the, essentially sets up a value um, uh, for, for uh, in curval containing, um, uh, uh, containing the integer part of the dimension, and f is the fraction part of the dimension. By the time I finish this loop, then, I've got some integer plus a fraction over 2 to the 16th that's got to be uh, uh, finished up with units supplied and so on. Well, let's look at this first part, which we do in case of a short. Um, get the next non-blank, non-sign token set negative appropriately. And so this is really going to pass up minus signs and plus signs that might be at the beginning and blanks. Um, then we have to check if it's the or register. Register is what comes up if you say count or demand or one of the uh, internal things for for uh, uh, one of text internal uh, six, 256 uh, uh, registers. Um, in, in that case, then we uh, uh, have to do a special thing that either fetches an internal integer or, or an internal dimension. If we find the whole dimension, like if we find the um, V size, then we get then we get to go to attach sign because we've got the whole thing in in the right units. Uh, but if we just get an integer, then we continue on and we have to figure out its points or centimeters or whatever. Um, if we didn't have the, in that other case, we back up the input, uh, re get ready to read the token again, and uh, check to see whether we with a decimal point or not. And um, if, it, if it was a decimal point, we have to set decimal radix and uh, and con and uh, and in other words, uh, the whole thing might have started with a decimal point. You can say point one. You don't have to say zero point one. Um, and if you start with a point, then you, you, you're you're getting into a base ten thing here. If you look at this code, you'll see what happens if a guy just says a decimal point and doesn't say zero either before or after it but just a period, and then PT or something like that, and it turns out that that's zero. Uh, but I hope people don't use that. Uh, now, um, uh, okay, that's the way this thing goes. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, on the next page, we have one of the prettiest uh, modules, the way, the way it gets formatted by Weave, uh, on LCFs, I guess, anyway. This is where we're just looking for all the different kinds of units that uh, uh, that can arise, and and we have to convert inches to points uh, by by uh, calling a macro here set conversion, which will um, uh, takes two parameters, the numerator and denominator, since so essentially multiplying by uh, 7227 dividing by 100 to get in inches uh, into points. Uh, this is uh, my definition of of a point. There's, I've searched for a standard official definition of what is a point and uh, not found, uh, not found uh, uh, a, a pronouncement of the Bureau of Standards or anything like that. The, uh, uh, the reference sources give, give uh, more or less significant figures, and the ones that, that gave the most significant figures were all consistent with this value. So uh, it's a nice, simple fraction. I'm choosing it as a definition of, of, uh, in, of an inch to a point. 
Um, and uh, I, as I wanted to emphasize again, that all this arithmetic has been carefully designed so that it will not, um, uh, it, it will round well, and it will, and, and it will not go over 32-bit calculations, and give a give a decent uh, answer. Okay, any questions before we break? Oh, so these are the routines that hey, there is one, yeah. Uh, this is a question mainly on the web and philosophy. The get next shows that you use labels, define labels in one module that aren't uh, actually defined until X number of modules later. Do you find this to be a problem? In, uh well, I wish that, yeah, I wish that that was, um, uh, that, uh, uh, um, that Pascal had, had a better setup for those. But actually what I did with the, uh, uh, is is almost all the labels in the program are defined once and for all at the beginning, and I probably have mentioned that in my first lecture. In, in module 15, it tells about this. I um, I have labels that that are are used in in ways that uh, are, are are quite common uh, uh, in order to in, in order to do things. So exit is is generally is is, is generally just before the end of a subroutine, and there's done. Uh, to get out of loops and found and things like this continue and these are used in in ways that are that are always uh, 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 the same as if I had if, if I had a, a programming language that that supported it and uh, uh, so uh, these are there's general uh, a few um, idioms that are used in the in the programming and there and the uh, labels were defined once and for all here um, I, uh, only a few places will we have a special label like attach sign, and, and in that case, uh, uh, if you notice, the attach sign was defined in the module, but also also carried through in in the names of other modules that we're going to go to attach sign. It's very important when you give the name of a module that if it, if there's some something funny about the control structure that 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 gets into the name of the module. Um, that was one of the, the important things we learned about. Uh, of, of formulating these these rules, um, but uh, most of the things, if we had re reprogrammed this to be uh, done with with uh, very few go-to statements, it would have turned out. I believe the program would, would have been a lot less readable and a lot slower, just because of the way the programming languages are working. And uh, if you don't believe me, we can debate this after class. But that's the that's but that. Uh, is a firmly held belief of philosophy after doing lots of lots of coding in this form. I tried to have have these labels on module 15. Um, uh, is part of the style of programming that's represented in this in this code. Uh, but but uh, for example, exit. Um, I have a I define return to be go to exit. And it's very and Pascal didn't have a return statement, so. Um, we just do that now. That means that I have to remember when I use the return statement in the procedure. I have to remember to declare the label exit at the beginning and to put it there at the end. It wasn't much of a hassle to remember that, though. Okay. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again at uh, 11 o'clock.